So does last night's Oscars change in any fundamental way how Hollywood goes about making movies? For some perspective on that, we're joined by Justin Chang. He's the film critic at the LA Times. Justin, welcome back to the News Hour. Um, very, very big night for Asian and Asian American movie makers last night. What do you make of everything, everywhere, all at once, sweeping so much gold last night? Yeah, William, thanks for having me. I think uh, everything, everywhere, all at once is absolutely, it's a milestone. Uh, it can't be taken lightly or denied. Um, I personally wish it were a better movie. It's funny, in writing about the film, I've described it as, I don't think it's remotely the best picture of the year, but in some ways it was the movie of my year and the movie of a lot of people's years because um, I kept thinking about it because this was a movie that people loved and people hated. It was extremely divisive. Um, and I am very much of two minds about the film, but watching uh, the movie win a, a kind of remarkable seven Oscars last night, I was thrilled by Michelle Yeoh's win, um, very moved as everyone was by Kiwi Kwan's speech, which was not a surprise, but which was a delight nonetheless. And there is something very significant about a movie about this scrappy, dysfunctional Chinese American family winning seven Oscars. I mean, that is, that, that is, there is something remarkable about that. Um, I was disappointed that some really excellent films like Tar, The Banshees of Inisherin, and The Fablemans got zero between them. And we can talk about this as perhaps a reflection of the fact that they were not as big commercial successes as Everything Everywhere, which was a big theatrical success. But I think that's a shame because that is very, uh, seven Oscars for one movie and for that movie to be Everything Everywhere is disproportionate. It doesn't reflect um, just the, the, the actual diversity and quality of the year in cinema. On that issue of diversity, I mean, Hollywood and the Oscars has been trying to make movies and to celebrate movies that, that better reflect the diversity that is this country. Do you think, I mean, all your criticisms aside, the points that you're making aside, do you think that, that, that this night does change the way movies get made going forward? Because this is a remarkable, when you look at who is in front of the camera in that film and what that film is all about, does that change things in a fundamental way? Yes, it absolutely does. And quite apart from my feelings, anybody's feelings about the movie, uh, love it or hate it, 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 it absolutely changes it. Um, Michelle Yeoh, in her speeches this season, says, for every little boy and girl who looks like me, it's not just the decision makers, it is for the, the very talented people who will maybe pursue their career dreams and think that they have what it takes. Um, how exactly this will change anything, you know, what decisions will get made going forward, um, that, that remains to be seen. And we've sometimes seen that... Uh, People can be very tokenistic about this kind of thing. People can say, well, if we just have a very sort of perfunctory kind of representation, then we've done our due diligence. Um, and uh, that's not good. Nobody needs that kind of representation. But you also do look at past Best Picture winners, like Everything Everywhere, like Parasite, like Moonlight. Um, the definition of what a Best Picture can be is changing, and I think that that is a very encouraging thing in terms of just what types of stories are being celebrated and who is fronting and telling those stories. Indeed, it is a remarkable tableau we saw on stage last night. Um, as I mentioned, while they didn't get as much love from the Oscars, two very big blockbusters did seemingly break that frozen reluctance that all of us pandemic-weary moviegoers had and <laughs> suffered through and got us back into the theaters. Do you think that that is, have we, are, are we done with the pandemic as far as movie going? I certainly hope so because I feel safer in a movie theater now. I still mask up in theaters, but I um, but I, I feel like it is an activity that um, I, I, I feel like there is this hunger to get back to theaters. And and it's worth noting that even though it wasn't technically a you know a studio blockbuster, everything everywhere I think developed its incredible cachet and 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 uh, uh, devotion in the industry partly because it was a huge success. Um, a very low budget movie that made many times what its budget was. And so that is a, a success story very much in itself. So I, I, we, it remains to be seen. I think that from what I understand this coming year, I mean, with the pandemic uh, in 2022, you had Top Gun, which was a holdover and you had Avatar, but, um, but they were still holding back some of their inventory. And I think this year they are, you know, the studios are gonna be back in what they hope to be close to full force, like pre-pandemic full, full, full force. But I also hope that um, that doesn't slight um, the great films that I think are really worthy of Oscar recognition and that benefit from this kind of attention, which is movies you, that premiere at film festivals, movies from other countries, independent movies. Um, 
um, documentaries. I, I hope that there is a, a really healthy uh, hunger and an appetite to see those movies in theaters on the big screen as well. Me too. Um, Justin Chang of the LA Times, great to have you back on. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. And as part of our ongoing arts coverage, we recently spoke with some of the now Oscar winners, including actress Michelle Yeoh and Sarah Polly, the screenwriter and director of Women Talking. You can watch those conversations online at pbs.org newshour. And that is